The Joker is an iconic character in The Dark Knight. He acts as the opposing force to Batman, a nihilist, a person who advocates the destruction of the social system for its own sake. As Alfred puts it, Some men just want to watch the world burn. What's particularly interesting about the Joker is that he's able to um, persuade Gotham's White Knight, Harvey Dent, using a completely fallacious set of arguments into believing that his two greatest allies, Batman and Commissioner Gordon, are in fact his enemies. So how is it that the Joker is so effective? After Harvey suffers from a severe burning entanglement, the Joker seeks him out and begins to batter out a highly persuasive speech. Do I really look like a guy with a plan? You know what I am? I'm a dog chasing cars. I wouldn't know what to do with one if I caught it. This is probably the most paradoxical explanation given by the Joker throughout the film. It is so true in the sense that his intentions are really without logical reason. To wreak chaos upon the world doesn't benefit any party. There's no money, no fame, no love, and no freedom. If anything, it's accomplishing purely for the sake of feeling accomplished. But if we considered his actions throughout the film, his argument is fallacious because it contradicts those actions seen earlier on. To escape from prison, to fire upon Gordon in public, to assault Harvey's van, all of these things would have required careful planning and timing. In a realistic world, things like these don't run smooth as butter by coincidence. We know that the Joker has a tendency to make up deceptive explanations quite often because all we have to do is look back to when he gives the you want to know how I got these car speech? He gives a different explanation every time. Now watch closely. He realigns Harvey's anger by safeguarding himself. The mob has plans. The cops have plans. Gordon's got plans. You know, they're schemers. Schemers trying to control their little worlds. I'm not a schemer. In this, he begins to set up a double standard. He makes it appear as if he's innocent because nothing he did was a part of the plan. It's the schemers that put you where you are. He establishes the false idea that everybody else should be blamed because nothing he did was planned. He was just like a mindless dog. Having no plan, however, doesn't equate to innocence. And here's the best fallacious argument. The Joker goes on to talk about even if the plans are horrifying, nobody panics, which is true. If we consider the way which Hitler drove Germany into a state of Jew hatred. He then states that the upsetting the established order, things become chaos. Which is also very true if we consider an example like 9-11 attacks. He concludes with this. Oh, and you know the thing about chaos? It's fair. This is an illogical conclusion. Neither part supports the idea that chaos is fair. Chaos theory has it that as a result of sensitivity, the behavior of chaotic systems appears to be random. In a simple scenario, randomization is fair, but consider this. Say three people were lined up, one of them is guilty of rape and murder. The others are innocent. Say we throw their names in a hat, and the one who gets picked will be thrown in jail. Say we made a pick, and the person chosen was innocent. Would this be fair? Not at all, because the guilty person will not suffer charges. Harvey doesn't recognize this. He hastily generalizes that chaos is fair, excluding other variables. A good example is a decision made to pick Harvey instead of Rachel for rescue. That decision was not made by chance. Both Batman and Gordon knew that Harvey was a critical chess piece. I took Gotham's white knight and I brought him down to our level. Playing on Harvey's inability to discern other variables resulted in a persuasive argument. It's really sad to think that at the end of the film, these are the ensuing words of Harvey Dent. The world.
world is cruel. And the only morality in a cruel world is chance. Unbiased, unprejudiced.